When someone mentions the word volcano, Colorado is not typically what comes to mind for the average person. Despite this, Colorado has had a long and violent history when it comes to continental igneous indigestion. Colorado's most recent flare-up of irritable basalt syndrome occurred roughly 4,200 years ago, and it really did mar up the landscape on a truly massive scale. To give you an idea of just how large this eruption was, this is the last super eruption of Yellowstone. Some 640,000 years ago, Yellowstone yeeted out around 1,000 cubic kilometers of material. In contrast, here's the biblical eruption of Dotsero, Colorado's newest volcano. Aha, uh -huh. look how cute he is. No, the reality is Dotsero is little more than a cough, geologically speaking, last Tuesday. In the geologic community, it is called a Mar volcano, which is caused by magma coming into contact with groundwater, flashing to steam, and causing an explosion in what is called a phreatomagmatic eruption. This eruption would have created a bunch of ash, a couple lahars or mud flows if there was a bunch of snow or ice, and a basaltic lava flow a few kilometers long that wound up pushing the Eagle River to the south end of its valley. So we have the what and the when, but what about the why, and the how, and the where, and the will this thing ever bury my house? Well, volcanoes generally occur in one of three places, subduction zones, hot spots, and rift zones. In a subduction zone, wet, dense, oceanic crust dips under buoyant continental crust. When it does this, it introduces water to the otherwise solid rock, inducing melt, which rises to the surface and creates a volcano. There's more to it than that, but for the sake of brevity, we'll leave it at that. An example of these volcanoes would be Mount St. Helens and the other volcanoes of the Cascades uh, but in the Pacific Northwest. Hotspot volcanoes are independent of plate boundaries, though they can be on them. And long story short, the geologic community isn't 100% sure on how they actually form. I'll leave it at that for now, but settings of these are Iceland, Hawaii, and the infamous Yellowstone. Finally, we have rift zones. Rift zones are kind of the opposite of subduction zones. Instead of two plates coming together, they get ripped apart. You may have heard of the supercontinent Pangaea. Rift zones are the reason we live on many continents instead of one. When these rifts start forming, the lithosphere, or crust, starts thinning, creating closer proximity of the surface to the hotter asthenosphere, or upper mantle. This allows melt to form and or reach the surface in the form of volcanoes. Again, there's quite a bit more to it than that, and if you guys want more videos about this stuff, let me know. But the ultimate final boss form of rift zones are mid-ocean ridges, like the one in the Atlantic Ocean. But before it gets to that point, it presents in what is called a rift valley. And that dear, handsome, and fiscally responsible viewer is the setting of our adorable little Dotsero, the Rio Grande Rift. The Rio Grande Rift runs from northern Mexico through New Mexico and into the middle of Colorado, with Dotsero being the northern end of its extent. At least, that's the best conclusion I can give based on the research I've done. If you know more, I'd love to hear it. Well, that's the why out of the way, but what about the will this bury my house question? The good news for you is that there is virtually zero chance of Dotsero erupting again. Dotsero is not the only volcano in the area, it is just the most recent example, and of the recent eruptions in the area, most if not all have been monogenic, which is to say they erupt once and are done. However, that is not to say there won't be an eruption in the general area again. But even so, the frequency of eruptions in the area range from thousands to tens of thousands of years between them. Geologically, that is still frequent enough to call the state volcanically active, but on the timescales of our squishy flesh bags, I wouldn't count on seeing another in our lifetime. Now if you want to see this thing, the good news is that it's extremely easy to get to. It's right off I-70. In fact, the interstate cuts right across the old lava flow, and I'll put a link in the description for specific instructions. But wait, there's more. If you visit Dotsero in the next 10 minutes, I'll throw in a second volcano absolutely free. That's right, just a few miles away is Willow Peak. This volcano features a great scoria cone profile and a crater full of beautiful aspens. This would be a great addition to any camping trip, but act now because this great geomorphological feature will only be around for the next 100,000 years. Willow Peak is accessible from the same exit, but take Coffee Pot Road and follow it till you get to this hill. It's older than Dotsero, I couldn't find an age, but if you want to see the difference between two eruptions a few thousand years apart, both are easy to visit in the same day. On a serious note, Willow Peak is pretty clean, but Dotsero is absolutely trashed. 
and it's sad to see Colorado's most recent volcanism treated like a dump. If you're going to visit, please take out what you brought in, and if you are feeling righteous, pick up an extra couple pieces of trash. I've seen places like this get shut down before, and it would be a shame not to be able to visit just because people couldn't be bothered to get rid of their elliptical at the proper disposal facility. Anyway, sources and directions are in the description, along with these cool books. That's all I have for you today, and I'll see you next time. Bye!